Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. In St. Croix, federal agents arrest a man for not complying with sex offender registration requirements. Tuesday, VI Department of Justice special agents arrested 38-year-old Jose Encarnacion. He's a registered sex offender who, according to the VI Attorney General Denise George, failed to update his registrations for the past year. During a routine compliance check, investigators say he did not live at the address he provided and arrested him on a warrant for failure to register. He's supposed to register where he lives every 90 days for his entire life after his May 2008 conviction of first-degree unlawful sexual contact. COVID-19 cases remain low and steady in the territory, according to the latest numbers from the VI Department of Health. There are 45 active cases territory-wide, with 32 on St. Croix, 13 right now on St. Thomas, and one active case on St. John, according to the latest numbers from the Virgin Islands Department of Health. Meantime, the FDA has authorized a second booster dose of Pfizer or Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for people who are 50 years old and older or for those who are immunocompromised. It comes as case numbers are low in the U.S. and the VI. But as we've been reporting, a new variant of coronavirus, BA2, is spreading right now. Stephanie Stahl explains. A second booster dose or fourth shot of Pfizer or Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine is now authorized for people 50 and older. People over the age of 50, the risk associated with an additional booster is very low. And the evidence that um, there is some waning of protection against the serious outcomes or that that protection could be improved uh, by giving uh, an additional dose. For those with a weakened immune system, the FDA has also greenlit a third booster or fifth shot. The FDA ruled without input from its independent advisors using research from Israel that suggested some benefit from the additional shot. The second booster is recommended at least four months after the first booster shot. It's a bit of a cautious move. University of Pennsylvania immunologist John Wary thinks the timing of this fourth dose may not be ideal. We have very low rates of you know, community transmission in most places in the U.S., so there's not a lot of risk of getting exposed right now. Um, we may want that booster to be timed next time we see the beginning of a wave coming, and there will be another wave. He also wants to see more guidance from the FDA for healthy people in their 50s like him. Have you decided what you're going to do? Uh, personally, I'm not going to get a fourth dose right now. I got my third dose only about four months ago. I don't see a great risk to me. The FDA says there may be an additional booster in the fall, possibly targeted to newer variants or even a mixture of several variants. Children under age five are still not eligible for the vaccine. Next week, the government will hold a public meeting to debate if everyone eventually needs a fourth dose, possibly in the fall, of the original vaccine or an updated shot. Even though it is beach weather year-round in the Virgin Islands, some people may still look to the summer months as a reason or a timeline to get in shape. And a dietitian says there are simple ways to lose weight without the fad diets. Here's more on what to do right now to reach your goals. Beaches and bathing suits are always staples here in the VI. But if you want to get healthier before the summer months, start now by changing your diet. Let's think about limiting our hours in which we're eating. Let's think about eating more fiber, more plants, less hyper palatable foods, less processed foods. Kristen Kirkpatrick, a registered dietitian with Cleveland Clinic, says fad diets aren't the way to go as there's no way to stick to them over the long haul. Instead, try intermittent fasting. You'll only eat during a certain time frame, such as between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. She says other diets that work, the Mediterranean diet, which includes healthy foods like whole grains, fruits, veggies, and seafood, as well as the DASH diet, rich in veggies, fruits, whole grains, low-fat or fat-free dairy products, fish, poultry, beans, and nuts. You can also cut back on calories by listening to your body. Am I hungry right now or am I looking to feed emotion? Am I just dehydrated? So really taking the time from a mindfulness perspective of Am I feeling true hunger? But I'm going to eat until I no longer feel that hunger, which means eating slow, chewing more, taking out distractions, and being able to stop before I feel that feeling of fullness. 
Kirkpatrick says not to focus on a timeline for weight loss. Instead, celebrate milestones along the way. Follow some of that advice. The registered dietitian says you don't have to cut out all junk food out of your diet. Instead, she says to focus eating healthy 90% of the time. Now to the very latest on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russia left peace talks on Tuesday, promising to pull back from attacks in northern Ukraine. But so far, those promises are just words. Reporter Skylar Henry has more details now from Washington. Russian forces kept up their assault on areas around Cherniv and Kyiv Wednesday. A huge explosion uh, east of Kyiv and north of Kyiv is uh, mean it's battles there. The people died, still died. The strikes show Russia may be slow to live up to its pledge to pull back from attacking the two cities. The Pentagon says it's seen some signs of Russian troop movements, but not a withdrawal. It is likely more a repositioning to be used elsewhere in Ukraine. Uh, where exactly, we don't know. I would just note that the Russians themselves have said, in the same breath they're saying they're, they're withdrawing, that they're, that they're reprioritizing the Donbass area in eastern Ukraine. Russian forces have made the most advances in eastern Ukraine, but they have still not been able to capture the port city of Mariupol. The city has been completely surrounded for more than a month now, and food and supplies are running low. The satellite image shows thousands of people lining up around a still intact grocery store in the city waiting for food. President Biden held a call today with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, while at the same time, Ukrainian parliament members arrived here on Capitol Hill for meetings with U.S. senators. Russia continues um, its merciless and cowardly, brutal bombings of Ukrainian cities uh, with the attempt apparently to level them to reduce them to rubble. The United Nations say more than four million people have now fled Ukraine looking for safety, making it the largest influx of refugees in Europe since World War II. Hmm. President Biden also held talks with European allies Tuesday, and they promised to increase support for refugees who have fled war-torn Ukraine while also ramping up pressure on Russia. Nearly 80 years after her service, a World War II veteran is being honored. Florine Crawford served as a member of what was called the Lipstick Brigade from 1944 until 1946. The group was made up of female typists and decoders who helped the Allies defeat Hitler. Affectionately known as Flo, was just 20 years old when she volunteered to join the U.S. military. She died this past January at the age of 97. But throughout her life, she always kept her confidential tasks as a member of the Lipstick Brigade a secret. Our USBI News, Kristen Allen brings us her story. She was something else. She was a, just a great lady. Flo Crawford brought a smile or a laugh to nearly everyone she met in her 97 years. I think one of the things that we miss the most is all the laughter and her precious giggle. But one thing a lot of people didn't know about Flo right away was her military service. She wouldn't talk about it too much, what she did. Uh, in fact, when you kind of dig into her a little bit, she says, well, what I did was not to be known by anyone. Flo was a member of a group of women, later termed the Lipstick Brigade. She said, you know, you didn't talk about those things, you might come up missing. <laughs> so she was really, she says, even my husband didn't know what I did. The Lipstick Brigade intercepted and deciphered thousands of messages from Japanese fleets. That's how the United States kept tabs on Japan during World War II. This allowed us to step outside of our normal daily routine and uh, come to meet a family uh, whose sister uh, provided a valuable asset during World War II with deciphering enemy uh, communications. Local veterans and the Embracing Our Veterans organization presented Flo's brother and sister-in-law with this commemorative plaque, honoring the service and classified work she kept secret her entire life. Even though her seat sits empty now at her brother's house, her spirit of love and laughter is still around. Up until the very, even a, a week before she passed, she was still smiling. Kristen Allen, USVI News. A great story. Her family plans to have a small celebration of life for Flo on August 28th, which would have been her 98th birthday. 
a look at your local forecast is straight ahead here on USVI News. Plus, another great military story to bring you today. A long-lost relative passes on a special family heirloom. A touching story of how a man received his grandfather's Purple Heart nearly 80 years after he died in World War II. That story is straight ahead here on USVI News. A Pennsylvania man was surprised to receive his grandfather's Purple Heart 78 years later. In fact, Jeff Herzog knew his grandfather died in combat in World War II, but he never knew about the medal. Here's the story. It was such a, a kind gesture that I will never be able to repay or forget. Last month, Jeff Herzog received a call from someone who turned out to be a long-lost relative and she had a special heirloom for him. And the first thing she asked me was, do you happen to know your grandfather's name on your father's side? He did, Webster E. Herzog. She proceeded to say, did you happen to know that he got a Purple Heart when he died in Belgium? Jeff found out his late grandfather's niece, or his second cousin Edie, and her daughter Dawn, whom he'd never known, had his grandfather's Purple Heart from when he died in battle during World War II. And Edie, now in her 80s, wanted to pass it on to him. So Dawn helped seek him out using social media and ancestry. They met the next day. Edie handed it to me, and it was, it was just, I mean, she started, she broke down, cried. Um, but it was such an honor. Edie was a child when two men in uniform came to deliver the message that Webster died in battle and present the family with his Purple Heart. Now, 78 years later, the newly reunited Herzog side is planning to have a Memorial Day picnic together, a fitting event given one of the last pieces of correspondence from his grandfather. In his letter, he, he had mentioned that, you know, he was doing fine, he was doing well, but he could not wait for the, for the, the war to be over so he could come home and they could have, how he put it, like had wieners and beer, hot dogs and beer. He died three days later. Jeff says the Purple Heart will be cherished and he'll continue to pass it down through the generations. And I know my dad would feel, feel very proud that I have it. In Maiden Creek Township, Caitlin Reardon, 69 News.